What's up guys, it's Gadget Friendly. Today we're gonna be going over how to convert your Minix Neo Z64A Android media player into a Neo Z64W Windows computer. This method also covers the reverse. If you'd like, you can also flash your Neo Z64W into a Neo Z64A. All you're gonna need in order for this to work is a USB flash drive and keyboard, the BIOS flash toolkit linked in the description, a Windows computer, and an ISO or image file of the installation disk you plan on booting from. I'm gonna demonstrate this whole process for you guys so it should be very straightforward and really easy to follow along with. I flashed mine back and forth a few times and I've never had a problem with it, so it is safe and it will create a backup as you go through it. So let's get started from the beginning. All right, so to get started, first you wanna copy the link in the description for the BIOS flash toolkit and then we're going to open up our internet browser, paste it into the address bar, and open up the Google Drive page where we can download the zip file. Once we've loaded the page, we're going to hit the upside down triangle at the top, or arrow, and download the zip file. There's four files in the zip file. The two top files are the BIOSes for each operating system. A 32-bit BIOS is needed to switch over from Android to Windows, and a 64-bit BIOS file is needed to switch over from Windows to Android. There's also Rufus 2.0, which is what we're going to be using to create our bootable flash drive to install the operating system, and also what we'll be using to create our bootable USB needed to flash the BIOS file itself. And then the last thing is Windows Toolkit, which you can use if you have a Windows installation disk to create an ISO image if you don't already have one or haven't already downloaded one. Once we've downloaded the zip file, we're gonna extract it. I chose to extract mine to the desktop, that way I could find it a little easier. And I created a folder for it called Z64. That way it doesn't just leave random files all over the desktop. Once it's finished extracting the files, you can close out of your browser or close out of your zip tool. And we should have the folder for it on the desktop. At this point, if you don't have a USB flash drive plugged in already, you're going to want to plug one in because we're going to need it for the next step. And we're going to go into the Z64 folder. And we're going to open up Rufus 2.0. It should recognize your flash drive. If it doesn't, remove it and plug it back in. We need to set the partition scheme to be MBR partition scheme for a UEFI computer. The file system needs to be FAT32, so it can be read by the UEFI shell. And we want to uncheck create a bootable disk using ISO image. We're going to click start, and this is going to format our flash drive. And all it is is going to be a blank flash drive. That's it. And then we can click close. And now we're gonna need to go and extract the appropriate BIOS. So whichever version you're switching to, extract that file. I'm doing the Windows BIOS. And then inside of the zip file, we're gonna go into the main folder and we're gonna copy this EFI folder. And we want to paste this to the root of our flash drive. Once we've pasted it, we're pretty much done in Windows. We can go in here and verify that all the files are there. And this looks good. So we're going to close out of it all. And we're going to remove our flash drive. And we're going to plug it in now to the Minix Z64. In order to access the BIOS on the Minix box, we're going to need to boot it up 
So if you're not already powered on, go ahead and insert the power cord and insert the USB thumb drive that you just created with the BIOS and hit the power button. While it's starting to power up, hold the delete key down or hit it repeatedly and it should boot into the BIOS main menu like this. And we're just gonna scroll across the top and go over to save and exit. And then we're gonna go to boot override and select UEFI built-in EFI shell. You should see a bunch of weird stuff on the screen pop up like this. And you're just gonna let it count down. And here it is now reading off of the flash drive that we've inserted. It's gonna do its own thing here and then it should give us a little prompt asking us to press any key to begin. And then now it's reading the flash. It's gonna create a backup for us in case we ever need to flash back later. And then it's gonna overwrite the existing BIOS with the one that we wrote to the USB flash driver, the one that we copied over from that zip file earlier. We're just going to let this do its thing and then we'll come back and check on it again when it's done. Once it completes this final step, the box should power off and not start itself up again. So that's how you'll kind of know that it's completed. And that portion of the flash is done now. We've done what we need to do on the Minix box. We flashed the new BIOS. Now we need to use Rufus again to create a bootable USB installation drive. So here's where we need the ISO file that I mentioned earlier. We're gonna recheck that box to create a bootable drive and we're gonna to browse to where we have our ISO or image file stored. Make sure you have the file system set to FAT32 and click start again and it's gonna create your flash drive. When it's finished, you're gonna get an error like this but it's perfectly normal so go ahead and hit close on it and then we're gonna close out of the Rufus program and you wanna open up your flash drive and just make sure all of the files are there, confirm that everything wrote successfully and there's one file in particular that you wanna look out for so just follow my steps here and make sure you see the file. Open up your flash drive, go into the EFI folder, go into boot and this is the file we need to kinda of start the installation via the EFI shell. So that looks good. We're gonna get out of here now and we're gonna place the USB drive into the Minix box and we're gonna boot it back up again and it should launch back into that EFI shell and I'll go over the next steps once we get there. So this screen should look familiar. We're gonna go back to save and exit and we're going to go and select UEFI, EFI shell. And we're going to let it time out again. This time we're going to scroll up and we're going to see how the box is recognizing our flash drive. For me, it's BLK1. It's showing up as a removable disk. I'm going to type in BLK1 with a colon. And then I'm going to change directories to that folder that we just looked at on the flash drive. So I'm gonna type in CD backslash EFI backslash boot. 
Now we're in the boot folder. And if I type in ls, this will show me the contents. And that's the file that I want to open right there. So I'm going to type in boot ia32.efi. And that launches straight into the USB installation. So this is like any other Windows install that you may have ever done. Once you see the main screen, you'll kind of recognize it. Gonna select your language. My language is English, so I'm gonna select English, hit next, and then select install now. And then on this screen, we're going to select I accept the license terms and hit next. And we're going to select custom. And as you can see, there are a whole bunch of partitions all created from the Android install. We're going to need to delete all of them except for the top system partition. So select them each one by one and then begin clicking delete and selecting OK. Once you've deleted all the partitions, you should be left with one big partition at 29.1 gigs, and you're going to select New, and it's going to create your additional partitions, and you will begin your Windows installation. So this is the first boot after the installation is finished. It looks just like your regular Minix boot screen. It's going to do a little spin at the bottom. And then we're going to wait for it to start up. And here's where you're going to enter in your product key if you have one. I'm not going to put in mine for the demo, but I'm just going to click skip. You could hit skip too if you want to enter it later. And we're just going to go through these couple of steps. Once we've completed the initial setup process, we should be at the Windows 8 start menu. And what we want to do first is go into our desktop. This is important now to go to the description and download the driver pack that's linked. 
we're going to need to install the drivers in order for all of the hardware on this computer to work, like the Ethernet port, the Wi-Fi, the audio, etc. So download that zip file and then place it on a USB drive and insert it into the Minix box and open up the main directory. And we're going to go into driver package, installer, platform installer, and we're going to open up the setup tool. Select yes. And we're going to click next. Select I accept the terms in this agreement. Click next. And now it's going to begin with installing our drivers. Once the installation has completed, we should get a little pop-up asking us if we want to restart now. So we're going to select the finish option to reboot the computer. Once it's rebooted, go back to your desktop, and if you look in the bottom right, you should see the Wi-Fi icon now. The sound symbol is active. We can adjust the volume if we need to. And to kind of, I guess, confirm 100%, we can go into the device manager, and we can make sure we don't see any yellow exclamation marks or anything like that. And that looks good. Everything looks to be 100% installed. Nothing standing out is missing drivers, so that's it. You should be 100% converted now from Android to Windows. If you're interested in reversing the process, just replicate what we did here in reverse. And I hope that helped out, guys. This was made pretty quickly, so there may be some things missing. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, and I'll do my best to kind of respond and guide you guys through this. Hang in there, guys. Take it easy. Have a good one.